G'day folks, it's Rob here, and in today's clip we'll be running through a few issues I'm having with the system behind me here, actually one namely, and that is a bit of a nitrite spike that's going on, and yeah, why this design of system um, can cause that to occur at times. So I'll stop nattering on, we'll flip the camera around, or the phone around, and we'll get cracking. So just a brief explanation on how this system is set up for you folks who um, haven't seen it yet. We've basically got a 1,000 litre or roughly 250, 260 gallon fish tank. We have 30 jade perch fish in there, which you won't see because I spooked them before. Just a couple of shadows down the bottom. And we have some water flowing in here. The water comes in, it's uh, well oxygenated. The fish take what they need, swim around, uh, provide some waste, which is taken out through this solids lifting overflow out through the side wall of the tank and into a radial flow settler. And there, all the solids are deposited on the bottom and the clean water comes out through this pipe here that I have flowing into a makeshift solids, or fine solids and biological filter. Our biological filters are basically anything where bacteria can set up a colony so they can process the ammonia and nitrite. And that is exactly what these things here are, the grow beds. Uh, these grow beds are basically large um, biofilters where the bacteria can process that waste. And just getting back to how the water moves around, uh, the water after it um, exits through the side holes in that little filter there is picked up by the pump, comes up here, is split off to the hydroponic or the plant side which goes out that way or back to the fish tank. So that's why it's basically called a split flow system because that pump is splitting the flow between two different areas. Now, some people will also call this a CHOP2, which is constant height one pump, uh, but because the flow is split, um, that's why it was called CHOP2. So anyway, generally, uh, how it was originally recommended these things were set up was you had your fish tank, your sump tank, and your grow beds, and that was it. There was no solids filter. All the waste came through into the sump tank where it mingled, was picked up by the pump. Some of that waste went back to the fish, and the rest went out to the grow bed. Some people were happy with that. A lot of us weren't. So we decided to put in a solids filter in between. Now that's all hunky-dory. Um, it collects all the solids and the water goes through. But because the water is going directly into the sump and it is not being processed in a biofilter as such, the ammonia and the nitrite is mingling down in there, not enough surface area for bacteria to colonize. So it's picked up by the pump again and then split between the grow beds and the fish tank and you end up with some coming back into your fish tank. Now ammonia um, can be toxic to fish, so can nitrite. So as a rule of thumb, general rule of thumb, you don't want any ammonia or nitrite entering back into the fish tank. Now there are ways you can guard against any ammonia poisoning or nitrite poisoning. Um, we won't get into that here. Uh, just briefly with nitrite poisoning though, otherwise you're gonna question me in a minute. Um, it is a rule of general rule of thumb that you add in one kilogram of salt, that's pure sea salt, not table salt, not iodized salt, pure sea salt for every 1,000 litres of water in your system. On to the issue at hand. I am getting nitrite readings in my water after the radial flow settler. That makes sense, it hasn't gone through any biofiltration. That's why I added in this little filter I talked about. But the other day, I noticed that it was a fairly large amount of nitrite. So, out of curiosity, I decided to test a few different places around the system. And here's a couple of samples I've prepared earlier. What we have here is three nitrite tests and an ammonia test. This one here was taken from the discharge from the grow bed. This ammonia and this nitrite here was taken coming out of the radial flow settler. And then over here we have this last nitrite, which is the reading from the water going back into the fish tank. So. As you can see, virtually no nitrite here. Well, actually none that I can really dis distinguish um, against the little color chart here. Over here, we have what I would say is probably close to 0.5 to 0.1 parts per million. And at the end here, I'd say is probably close to, or well, somewhere between 0.25 and 0.5 parts per million. So we obviously don't have enough biofiltration in that small little filter to convert the nitrite or oxidize it into nitrate. And here with this ammonia, Obviously, you can tell we're probably around about 0.5 parts per million. Now, it's not a huge problem with the ammonia at the moment, mainly because the water temperature is so low and my pH is low. So ammonia is in the form of ammonium, which isn't as toxic to the fish. So I'm not concerned about that. 
Um, I would be very concerned about this, especially if it continued to rise and the system didn't have salt in it, because yeah, it would quite easily knock off a couple of fish, give them brown blood disease or nitrite poisoning. So what I need to do is tweak my system a little bit. Now in my old aquaponic system, uh, the clips are still up on the channel if you want to suss them out, but I had a couple of these tanks as fish tanks, and then from there I had it running into a radial flow settler that collected the solids, and then from there I had it running into another filter, a moving bed bioreactor, with loads of the PEO3 or five spoke biomedia, wastewater treatment plant biomedia, and that biomedia in the filter had enough surface area, biological surface area, to process the waste of approximately 90 fish that were grown out to 500 grams or one pound. So all of my biofiltration was happening in that drum before the water made it through to the sump tank where it was split and then sent back to the fish. So the fish never even saw any ammonia or nitrite come back into their tanks whatsoever. So now as my fish are uh, getting larger and they're eating more and obviously I can't process all the waste in the small little dinky biofilter, I've got to come up with something else. Uh, my thoughts are so far is I'd like to try another in sump biofiltration unit because I don't have a lot of room down here. We need to keep this walkway clear and I can't really set up another drum here. So what I'm going to do is something similar um, to what I've done previously when I had a, just a fish farm or an aquaculture system. And I'm going to make a trickle filter using some of this um, aquarium filter matting. This one needs a good clean over the top to collect any fine solids. And then underneath that, I'm going to have a static pack of the PEO3 biomedia, the same stuff that I had in the moving bed bioreactor. And that should have enough biological surface area on that media to convert all the ammonia into nitrite and then oxidize it into nitrate. So we shouldn't have any going back into the fish. Now I'm fairly sure that little trickle filter will work. It worked with the aquaculture system, but it will mean I will have to um, pull this drum out every couple of months and give it a good clean because there will be some solids that make it through this little section of filter matting down into the biomedia itself and potentially foul up the work. So it just means probably every two months I'll come out and give it a good clean. That's the first fix. And if that doesn't work, what I'm thinking about doing is basically reconfiguring this whole filter system, pushing that one over towards that grow bed over there setting up a moving bed bioreactor here and that water can then overflow down into the sump tank and then we should have no problems whatsoever. And in theory, I could actually get away with uh, removing all the media in these grow beds and turning them into floating raft systems, but I prefer not to. I'm rather um, keen on these media-based grow beds, so I'll just leave them in situ. So just quickly, there will be some folks who say, but I've had a system um, plumbed like this for years and it's been fine. And nine times out of 10, um, folks have not overstocked the fish tank. You'll end up having real problems when you overstock the fish tank. There's a lot of food going through the system. It's, um, yeah, nitrite and ammonia are being formed within the sump tank down there. And then it's being pumped back to the fish tank. That's when you're gonna get yourself in trouble. You know, if you're sensibly stocked, you've probably only got 25 to 30 fish at the most in the system. And you've got high flow rates going through your grow beds. Uh, then you will get small amounts of nitrite and if you do have salt in the water the fish won't die but you know there's always the um the, the one guy out there who goes big out of the gate he'll stick you know 50 plus fish in there the old rule used to be 100 for an ibc or a thousand liters uh, far too much waste is being accumulated in the sump tank then being sent directly back to the fish and yeah they start dropping off one by one so um, this is just my little cautionary tale this is what I recommend people do, some form of biofiltration after the solids filter. And if you do follow those steps and have that biofiltration, I don't think you're going to have any concerns whatsoever with losing fish from the system. So I will be filming a clip on how that little uh, biofilter down in there is going to be modified. So if you want a notification when that's posted to the channel and you haven't subscribed already, all you need to do is hit that little subscribe button down there and pound on the bell icon and YouTube, fingers crossed, will send you a notification as soon as it's uploaded to the channel. And for you folks who have just stumbled upon the channel, you can check out our previous aquaponic uh, how-to clips by clicking on the little top button when it appears at the end of the clip. And there'll also be a link down in the description below that you can click on as well. 
Uh, before I go, I really do need to thank you all for coming along and thumbing up the clips and sharing them around with your family and friends. I really do appreciate it. Special thanks needs to go to those awesome folks supporting us on the Farm Your Own Yard website membership page and also through the YouTube membership program. Thank you very much, folks. There's links to those programs down the bottom and a little button will pop up here at the end that explains what they're all about. But I will leave it there. I'll stop nattering on. I do hope you're all well and happy and your own aquaponic systems are booming and I will catch you next clip. Cheers, folks. Have a top one.